and welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com as well as RedHeart.com. I'm your host Brittany and in today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the scrubby set. This is a free pattern that's available at BeHookedCrochet.com and you can get the link to that pattern in the description below. To complete your scrubby set you're going to need one skein of Red Heart Scrubby Yarn in the colorway of your choice. Now I recommend you play with some color. You're going to want to use some accents, so you may want to pick up two different skeins and complementing colors. You're also going to need a size 5.5 millimeter hook, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors. In the first part of the tutorial, we're going to work on the pot scrubby. And so you're going to want to grab your yarn that you're going to be using for the pot scrubby, and we're going to create a slip knot. Now you want to leave yourself a tail that's about four or five inches, maybe a little bit more. We're going to use that to draw up the end when we're finished. Now place the loop on your hook and close up your slip knot. To start off this pattern, we want to make 22 chains. Now once you have your 22 chains, we want to find the other end where our slip knot is. And we just want to insert our hook in the first chain. Now it's a little bit difficult to see where the chain is given the nature of the yarn, but you can tell when you've made it into the chain because you'll have some loops on one side and on the other. Then you'll just take your working yarn and pull it over the hook and then you want to pull that through both of the loops on your hook. So what we've done there is created a slip knot to join the two ends together. So now we have our ring that's going to serve as a foundation for our pot scrubby. So the key to being successful when working with this type of yarn is to just make things as simple as possible and you might want to crochet a little bit looser than what you're used to. So keeping those things in mind to proceed we're going to chain three. Now we're going to be working in double crochets and typically what we would do at this point is work our stitches into the chain. But that is going to be incredibly difficult because there's very little stitch definition to this type of yarn. So what I suggest doing is working your stitches around the chain. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. To make your double crochet, you want to make sure you yarn over and then just hold your ring open. I like to use my fingers back here to sort of guide things. And then just insert my hook inside the ring, then come back and pull up a loop. Now you'll yarn over, pull through two of the loops on your hook. So you should have two remaining then yarn over and pull through the remaining two. That's how you make a double crochet stitch and we've done so around the chain so it makes it easier. We don't really have to fight with the yarn when we're being clever about it. So we want to do that a total of 25 times. So we need 25 double crochets. I highly recommend you keep count as you go because it is a little bit more difficult to count your stitches when you're working with this. So you'll want to make sure you keep track of your stitch count. The chain three that we created, created at the beginning is not going to count as a stitch. So I've made two double crochets. I'm just going to continue until I have 25.
So once you've made your 25 double crochet stitches, you may have some space left over. And what I do to sort of get rid of that is just scoot your stitches. Since we didn't work into the chain, they actually move. So we can just slide them over. And that way it's going to work to close up that gap. So the next thing we want to do is find our first double crochet stitch. And you're going to have to use your fingers a little bit to feel where the stitches are. So we know we have our chain three and that was our starting point for that last round. And we don't want to work into that but we want to find the next double crochet and you can just sort of pull these apart so you can see exactly where that post is. Okay, we're going to be working with post stitches because it's a little easier to work a post stitch with yarn that has low stitch definition. So to make a post stitch, it's just a uh, front post double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook in behind that post and then just finish off the double crochet as normal and then just continue find the next post sort of feel around for it and so these front post double crochets sort of make the pattern unique it gives it a nice good texture so that it, it's a little bit better at cleaning really messy jobs. It also adds some thickness to it so that our scrubby disc is going to be uh, pretty sturdy uh, without actually having to stuff it with anything. And it makes it easier because we don't really have to work into the stitches, we're just working around them. Now if you're finding it to be incredibly difficult at any point to work your hook through the loops or through the stitches or anything, you'll know that you should probably try to loosen up your tension a bit. So if you're making your stitches looser than normal, it's going to make it easier to do these wrap and pull through. So when you've made it back around, you're going to notice a little bit of shift here in the pattern. And that's typical. That's because we did not join. We just went ahead and started our front post double crochet just right on top of the first one. And that's another thing that's working to our advantage with this type of yarn. We don't want to have to really mess around with joining them with a slip stitch and trying to find the chains and, and that's just really more difficult than it has to be. But the cool thing about this pattern is it's really forgiving and we're actually not even going to see this little shift that you see there once we're all finished. So you do want to try to keep track of your counting as you're working. It's, it's okay if you drop a stitch or if you add a stitch because, like I said, this is a very forgiving pattern. But the one thing you want to try to avoid is decreasing too much. Okay, so every so often you just want to take a look and make sure your, your piece isn't going inwards. Okay, so that would be an indication that you're decreasing. So if it's this wide down here and then say a few rows up, it's more narrow, you know you've decreased, and vice versa, if it's going out, then you're adding stitches. Okay, so you just want to be aware of that. And really, there's nothing more to this pattern. We're just going to work in these front post double crochet stitches all the way around until our scrubby measures four inches long. So from here all the way up, 
measures 4 inches. So now that you're getting a pretty good hang of doing these front post double crochets, you're probably getting a little more used to working with the yarn. At this point, go ahead and finish crocheting the length of the scrubby. So you can stop when it measures about four inches long and then come back to this video. We'll talk about finishing it up. So once your pot scrubby measures about four inches, as we talked about before, then we're ready to bind off and finish things up. So when you bind off, leave yourself a tail that's about six inches or so. And then you want to pull that tail through the loop on your hook. Now we're going to be working with each end separately. So just pick one of your ends, doesn't matter which one, and thread it on your darning needle. And we're going to create a drawstring. So this is where we ended up here, and I'm just going to work in and out of the stitches. And you can skip every other one. We don't really have to go under all of them. But the one thing we want to make sure we do is that we go all the way until we've reached the other side. So when you've gone all the way around, all we're going to do is pull this, and we need to pull real tight to work this closed. Okay, so as you pull the string, you should draw up the end of the scrubby. And be careful when you're doing this, it'll it's a little hard on the hands. But once you get it fully closed, then we can just leave that end where it is. Okay, so we're going to use that later on to secure things. <clears throat> now we want to do the same thing for the other side.
Okay, so once you've closed up both of the ends, now the ends are going to be the middle of the scrubby. So go ahead and flatten it out. And so that way it's like a disc shape. Okay, so then locate one of your ends. Now we're gonna work to secure it. So take one of your ends and push it right down in through the center and out the other side. Now tie these off. Again, you want to get these as tight as you can. Okay, once you're sure that those are nice and secure, then you can simply trim that off and the ends just blend right in with the scrubby. And that's all there is to this part of the pattern. Now if you want to go ahead and grab your skein of the scrubby yarn and we'll work on the next portion of the pattern. Now we're going to move along to the scrubby cloth tutorial. So you're going to want to grab one of your colors and create a slip knot. And this time you don't have to leave a, a long tail, we're just going to weave it in at the end. Now once you secure up your slip knot, then we want to make four chains. And we're going to be working in a round pattern, so we need to make this chain, this foundation chain, we need to turn it into a ring. And we're going to do so by slip stitching into the very first chain. Now this might be a little bit difficult for you to see the individual chains. What I recommend doing is looking for the slip knot because that's fairly obvious. We can find that pretty easy. And then you just want to insert your hook into the chain, just any part that you can get your hook into that's right next to the slip knot. Now we'll make a slip stitch. So grab the working yarn and pull through and through the loop on our hook. Now typically what I like to do is try to pull this chain open. That way I can work into the center of that ring. So moving forward to round one, and we're gonna be working in double crochet stitches. So we want to make a chain of three, and that is going to count as one double crochet. Now we want to make nine double crochets into the center of that ring.
So once you have finished up your nine double crochets, we're, remember we're counting that chain three as a double crochet. So we'll have a total of 10 stitches here. We want to locate that chain and just do the best you can and find the first chain. Well, it's technically the third chain. So we've got the first chain down here, two, and then three right up here. And you want to slip stitch right into that chain to finish up round one. To begin round two, we want to start off with three chains, and this is going to count as a double crochet. And for this pattern, it's actually really quite simple. We're just making a standard crochet circle. So for round two, we want to have two double crochets in every stitch, but the challenging part is going to be the lack of stitch definition that we have with this scrubby yarn. So what I like to do is turn it up so that you can see the edges of the stitches. And you can sort of make out a V there. Another method would be to try to find the post, then you can find the stitch that you would work into. So you're gonna have to just have a little bit of practice and have a little bit of patience, and this will come to you. And the cool thing about this yarn is if you make a mistake, honestly, you're not gonna see it. So do the best that you can, locate your first stitch, and make two double crochets in the first stitch. And you'll also do that for the remaining stitches. So we had a total of 10 stitches from round one. So you'll want to keep track of your count as you go. Since we can't really see the stitches very well, we want to make sure that we have 20 double crochets at the end of round two. So I want to point out how I'm locating these stitches, just so you can sort of get an idea. <clears throat> You'll get used to this as you go, but I mentioned before you can look at the top and you can really see this is your back loop right here, and this is your front loop. And if you turn it to the side, you can almost see a little bit of an opening. And I know that the next stitch is going to be right next to where I made my last one, so you can kind of use that as a gauge to tell you where to put your next stitches. So if you're counting along as you're making your double crochet stitches, I've just worked what looks to be in my last double crochet, and I'm only at 18, so I have 18 double crochets. But we don't want to forget that the chain threes are counting as a stitch, and we want to maintain our pattern. So we have to have two double crochets in every stitch. Doesn't matter if it's the starting chain or not, there still needs to be two there. 
So in order to make that happen, you can see this last little, you can see the gap there, and there's a stitch located right at the base of that chain three. And we want to make our final double crochet into that space. Now, this is double crochet number 19, if you're not counting that chain at the beginning. Then once you're certain you have your 20 double crochets, then we can join with a slip stitch to that third chain. And again, just do the best you can at locating it here. It usually is going to sit right on top, just right next to that first post, which you can see the first post is right there, and the chain right next to it. See that little V? That's my third chain. So we'll just slip stitch right in there, and that finishes off round two. To continue on to round three, we're going to start off with three chains. And for this part of the pattern repeat, we're going to be increasing every other stitch. So we have our chain three here acting as one double crochet. And since we're increasing every other stitch, then we need to make two double crochets into the next. And so just try to locate your first double crochet post. You can see mine right here. And I'm just gonna make two double crochets into the first stitch. Now for the next stitch, we just want to make one double crochet. And two in the next. And we just want to repeat that all the way around. You'll want to have a total of 30 double crochet stitches at the end of this round. Now let's say you got interrupted while you're working with this yarn and you got distracted and you lost your stitch count or you can't remember if you did a double crochet last or two double crochets last. Let me just kind of point mine out to help you out in these situations. So the first thing you want to do is you'll remove your hook, pull up your working loop so you don't lose your stitch, and you'll want to just pull the yarn apart and that should separate the stitches a little bit. So you can see I just have one post here and you can see that right here. So that's just one double crochet stitch. And then if you come to this next one, if I pull that apart, you can see a V. So there's actually two double crochet stitches there. And then there's one and then two. So that's something that you can you can train your eye to get used to seeing with this yarn since since you don't really have a good visibility of the stitch you just gotta be a little creative and a little patient as I mentioned earlier on so 
So if you've been counting correctly and increasing correctly, you should end up with two double crochets in the last stitch. Now don't, don't be too worried if this isn't the case for you. If you've added an extra stitch or you've dropped a stitch, honestly, like I said, you're really not going to be able to see the difference. So you can, you can rip it back if you'd like and fix the mistake, or you could just simply go on. I, I guarantee you won't know any better once it's all finished. So to complete round three, we're going to end by slip stitching into that top chain. So that right there. And now there's just two rounds remaining in this pattern. And I'm going to do a color change just so I can demonstrate how you're going to do that. But know that this is a really flexible pattern. There's a lot of different ways you can play with the color. You can change colors every single round. Or you can do like three like we've done here and then we'll do the last two in a different color. You can do two rounds in one color and then one round in a contrast and then the other round in the original. You know, you, the sky's the limit. Play around with it a little bit, but I'm going to demonstrate how to change the colors here and just know that that is going to be the same no matter where you're changing colors. So I'm just going to trim my working yarn from the color that I'm changing from and I'm going to grab my new color and create a slip knot. Now this is just one way to change colors. There are several different ways to do it. I find this method pretty easy with this yarn so we're going to go with this way. Add the slip knot to your hook and then you want to pull the new color through the loop on your hook. Then what I like to do is flip it over on the back and I'm just going to tie these two ends together to secure the new color and to secure the end from where we bind it off. Okay, now we can move forward with round four. So to begin round four, we want to chain three. and this is going to count as a double crochet. This time we're going to increase every two stitches. So we're going to make a double crochet, a double crochet, and then two. So this chain three is counting as one. We'll locate our very next stitch, which you can kind of see right there. There's my post, my V. So I want to make one double crochet into that first stitch. Now I have my two double crochets that are side by side, so the next stitch we want to increase. So we'll do so by making two double crochets in the same stitch. Now we'll make one double crochet in each of the next two, so one and two. and increase in the next two double crochets. And that's the repeat for round four.
So just like the previous round, if you've been increasing correctly, you should end up with two double crochets in your last stitch. Now when you're coming off of a color transition like this, it, it'll throw you off a little bit because it's going to look like there's a stitch here to be worked into, but when in fact there's not. This is part of the bind off and where we bind it on with the new color. And so if you're a little confused by that, you'll want to keep track of your stitches, so counting as you go along, and then also making sure that you're increasing in the right place. So you might ask, well, how will I know if I increased correctly or if I missed a stitch or dropped one? The best way to figure that out, since you can't really see the stitches here and looking at the post stitches, is just separating your work and looking for the individual post and just going back and saying okay one and one and two then one one and two and just go all the way around now we're gonna finish off round four just like the others we're gonna slip stitch into that third chain and now we're ready to move on to the final round so round five is going to be very familiar. We're going to start off by chaining three. And this time we're going to increase every three stitches. So we have our first double crochet here. That means we need to make two more double crochets, so one into each of the next two, before we put our increase in the next stitch. Okay, so I've got my three total double crochets, so now I want to increase in the next stitch. So we'll make two double crochets there. Now we want to make one double crochet into each of the next three. and increase in the next. And that's our pattern repeat for round five. Now when finishing round five, again, we're going to end up with two double crochets into the last stitch and we want to slip stitch to that third chain. And that finishes up our pattern. So all we need to do at this point now is bind off. You can pull that tail through the loop on your hook. Now we'll just flip it over to the back and then we have a few tails that we need to take care of. So where I have the color transition, honestly I don't weave in these ends. I've tied them off so that they're nice and secure, but since this yarn is so fuzzy, you really can't see when you trim off the tails. So if I just trim these off, it's basically like they're not even there. So now you have a choice. You can go ahead and weave in the end in the middle and you can do so with a darning needle or in the center you're pretty secure there so you're you're safe to trim it off if you'd like to do that if you know this is going to get a lot of use it's probably a good idea to at least try to work it around 
the center and I'm just going under the first round of stitches. So just pull that through a few, then you can trim it off. And then you'll work this tail in in the same way. So with that, we've finished up our scrubby set. Now all you need to do is create one in every color variation. So you're going to need a lot of these because they come in real handy. I've enjoyed using mine as I've been crocheting them. They dry really nicely, they don't have a funky odor to them, and they work really well. They're soft on, on my dishes, but they, they'll get off the mess. So I really find them very useful, and I think you will too. A big thanks to our sponsor Red Heart for providing us with today's Red Heart Scrubby yarn for our tutorial. You can purchase your Red Heart Scrubby directly from redheart.com and you can get the link in the description below. Until next time, on behalf of BeHookedCrochet.com as well as redheart.com, I'm your host Brittany. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.